Okay, I would like to move on to uh, part two of my timeline, which picks up the picture uh, from March going through April and early May. And uh, this shows the uh, changing the changing agenda from those early days. So, okay, so um, yeah, we're into uh, we're into March now, but I'm just going to show this uh, one thing uh, from uh, February. Um, yeah, while everyone was criticizing uh, Donald Trump and he was truly in, uh, in denial, what about Nancy Pelosi? Uh, Nancy Pelosi visited China's Chinatown uh, and she's saying something quite different from Donald Trump. She's saying, uh, you know, all of this stuff. She was echoing the World Health Organization, saying, "Be, don't be, um, don't be racist. Come down to Chinatown, hug a, hug a Chinese person." Uh, so, if that wasn't, um, um, it wasn't denial. Uh, I don't know what was. So, we just got to see. Uh, this in uh, in that context, Trump administration officials do not get prepared, don't buy masks, food, cleaning supplies or anything. Just wait for a vaccine and do what you're told. So, um, so you've got these two narratives and they're both, they were both uh, fake on either side. So much for being you know, partisan, eh? So uh, this is on the 3rd of March um, from the World Health Organization. Stigma can drive people away from seeking help by getting screened, tested and quarantined. When talking about COVID-19, certain words and language may have a negative meaning for people and fuel stigmatizing uh, attitudes. So don't even kind of suggest that the uh, that the, uh, the virus came out of Wuhan. I mean, we've got the Spanish flu, we've got the Hong Kong flu, but we can't have the Wuhan or the uh, flu. And then uh, about this time, um, True News uh, revealed this. Uh, they were asking the question whether the uh, vice president was possibly exposed to uh, coronavirus in Florida, and there was a lot of stuff, very interesting stuff that was coming out about APEC and CPAC and uh, people who may have been uh, exposed there. So it really just sort of came to nothing. Uh, it was a question, right question at the right time. And then um, I wrote this article uh, in early uh, early March, and um, I said in New Zealand, the authorities are trying to quarantine information and not the coronavirus. Um, so I said just a few days ago, our Prime Minister was complacently saying there was no coronavirus cases in New Zealand. Uh, my partner Pam caught the, uh, the interview on the radio, I didn't. And then there was one in two, and now there's four cases and we know that there are more, uh, but we will be drip fed the information while it gets worse. Um, and then uh, there's this, I'm not concerned at all. Donald Trump dismisses fears coronavirus is close to the White House after CPAC attendee tested positive and the first Washington DC case was confirmed while at dinner with Brazilian President Bolsonaro. And then uh, Italy, uh, this is the 8th of March, Italy to lock down Milan region in bid to contain coronavirus outbreak. Uh, measures include a virtual ban on e entry or exit from Lombardy and several other northern areas are to be targeted in draft uh, decree. And then 
So now this was interesting because uh, nowadays when I go on to any New Zealand media, uh, all they can talk about, that's the only thing that they talk about, everything else is on hold. Um, all they can talk about is COVID-19, COVID-19, COVID-19. But back in uh, on the 8th of March, what were they talking about? Uh, they were talking about anything else, but there was just one uh, item here uh, on uh, coronavirus as a quarantine hotel collapsed. But apart from that, absolute silence. And then uh, on the 7th of March, uh, coronavirus, 43 hospital staff among Kiwi cases, close contact, self-isolating. So it was all about, uh, the, the mantra then was uh, 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 self-quarantine. So if you were on a, on a cruise ship, you, uh, you self-quarantined and it wasn't police. If you arrived back in New Zealand from China or Iran or Italy or anywhere, you self-quarantine and of course it wasn't, it wasn't uh, policed. So that was back in March, so just as a reminder. And then, uh, then we had our third case of coronavirus confirmed in, uh, in New Zealand. Uh, that's from the 5th of March. So, uh, you know, March was kind of end of February, first, uh, beginning of March is when we first got our case, first cases. Um, Jacinda Ardern reveals unprecedented travel restrictions to combat coronavirus. All travellers to New Zealand to self-isolate. So again, it was self-isolate. There was no policing. Uh, people just kind of observed self-isolation if they felt like it. Nobody really bothered to check up if they were actually doing so. And here we are, everyone travelling to New Zealand from overseas to self-isolate. So until now, foreign travellers arriving from mainland China and Iran have been banned from entering the countries. Travellers from South Korea and Italy have been asked to self-isolate for two weeks on arrival. And but the cruise um, cruise ship saga uh, continued, and uh, I remember going down. We could clearly see the cruise ship, um, you know, in Wellington Port. Uh, there were numerous cases, but in this, uh, the cruise ends abruptly. Passengers let loose in Wellington, um, and that was on the uh, 16th of March. So we don't know. I think that was the cruise liners just doing their own thing, but of course nothing was policed. And then uh, we've got this from uh, a few days later. Uh, Chinese state media initially called it the Wuhan virus. Now China says that's racist. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization won't call the cor coronavirus by its name, SARS-CoV-2 or COV-2, which, which some Chinese scientist says, hurts so social stability. And uh, here we are, this is just another, uh, this is a uh, report. Passengers kicked off cruise ship, they're just let loose in Wellington, presumably by the, uh, you, know, by, you know, by the people on the, on the cruise ship. And then uh, a gradual sort of tightening up, a sort of semi-demi uh, tightening. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern announces New Zealand border closure to non-residents. And of course, what happened? Uh, well, when when we got to the lockdown, there were a whole lot of um, uh, foreign tourists who were stranded in New Zealand, and uh, it was a real mess. So all of New Zealand's borders were closed to non-residents in an attempt to stop the spread of COVID-19. Only New Zealand citizens or permanent residents and their families will be able to enter the country 
uh, from 11.59 p.m. on Thursday. She announced the decision on Thursday evening, say it follows a number of tourists refusing to isolate. I'm becoming increasingly concerned visitors to New Zealand are not adequately self-isolating or refusing uh, not to, and that is an unacceptable risk that we must end, she told media. The law also extends to the Pacific Islands. So people from the Pacific were exempt from the previous rule of mandatory self-isolation for 14 days upon entering New Zealand. Now, now she extended it. And then uh, I think on the same day, they announced that testing for virus was rolling out across New Zealand. And of course, there's always that question of what the nature of the, t the testing was. I never got a, a response. Um, the only explanation of what a uh, COVID-19 test involves uh, comes from the um, from the naysayers, from you know, from from, from the contrarians. So, what am I supposed to do with that? We're just bl blithely told, you know, that people are being tested, but what are they being tested for? That is the question. And um, then this is on the 15th of March. Jacinda Ardern announced the toughest border restrictions in the world. Well, yeah, that's a load of bollocks. Um, and then this was, I haven't got the date for this. Uh, New Zealand government uh, announces a transition to level four national lockdown um, and that's when we all had to stay in our houses. Uh, we couldn't, we were allowed to go for one walk a day uh, within, you know, just in the immediate environs of our own home. You weren't allowed to, to go to the beach or the bush or anything. Um, so, yeah. And then, uh, it was getting pretty um, much like a police state. Um, so I got this following as a rumour, but it does not mean it's false. I got told today that Fenua Pai Air Base near Auckland are full of soldiers and they plan to block the Bombay's Auckland Tunnel and block the north. All Aucklanders will be locked in, so if you need to leave, leave today. So I've got no idea. I've never been able to to confirm any of this, but uh, what did appear in the media was this headline: um, "Coronavirus police can now enter homes to look for people gathering." And uh, Okay, so uh, moving into April, um, we have this. Uh, this was an article that I picked up off uh, RT. It was a um, it was an opinion piece by a journalist and a lawyer working in New Zealand, and he was asking the question: New Zealand becoming police state, COVID nineteen lockdown to be taken seriously, but reporting neighbours and abuse of power goes too far. And then I wrote my own thing. I wrote a compendium of stories pointing towards the move towards a totalitarian uh, police state. Um, and then I started off by saying, uh, look at this graph and contrast the Asian countries with Western nations. Uh, we don't know that Japan, Sing Singapore, Taiwan, etc., didn't have a milder strain of the virus, but it seems to indicate that they had something right in their response. So you've got all these countries. This is when uh, everyone is coming out, and uh, oh no, this is a this is slightly uh, different. Uh, so yeah, this shows all these other countries that are doing really badly, and then you have the Asian countries. Um, that are doing better. And um, I don't know if Taiwan is here. Taiwan is the country that seemed to be doing the best. 
Um, and this came out uh, beginning of April. Um, I had an exchange with Stacey Herbert of the Max Kaiser show. Um, and this was, uh, this was the, uh, the shops in, um, in, I think, uh, Berlin. So it just shows the shortages kicking in. And then I wrote something. I said, New Zealand economy at Great Depression levels, GPs, that's general practitioners or MDs, laid off. Um, so retired GPs and nurses could be called back to work in possible coronavirus pandemic. The uh, Ministry of Health says, well, I was wondering if that is actually happening. This comes after 54 hospital staff in New Zealand were asked to go into self-isolation after treating a probable case of COVID-19. And then about this time, uh, I started to look at what I called contrarian uh, views. And um, this was Dill Bigtree. I started watching him. And then shortly after this, um, I started, well, I watched with my partner, Pam, a nine-part documentary on, on vaccination. And that made all the difference to the way in which I began seeing things. And uh, one of the things that, um, of course, has been discussed and, and suppressed is uh, any relationship to, uh, to 5G. Uh, but here goes a, um, a notice saying uh, New Zealand to launch 5G network at an event in Wellington on Tuesday, Vodafone. Uh, New Zealand switched on 5G in parts of the capital as well as Auckland. Christchurch and Queenstown. Uh, so Vodafone New Zealand launched the wireless service in partnership with Nokia in parts of Wellington, Auckland, Christchurch and Queenstown on uh, Tuesday morning. So uh, there goes the, uh, the, the, um, the, conf the confirmation. And uh, and then that was about the same time as a news, New York uh, doctor came out and he described the effects of 60 gigahertz on uh, patients. It, it, was, uh, it was censored immediately, but he was saying, really, he was just kind of wondering aloud. He said uh, he's seeing really strange things that are happening and that, 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 that his patients looked more as though they had lungs more as if they were on the top of Mount Everest or, or were in a plane that was depressurizing. Um, so, of course, you couldn't have any discussion of that. And uh, it was about this time uh, that uh, we had David Icke and his three interviews. Of course, I disagreed, and I think I still disagree with him that there's no such thing as the virus. Um, but he was starting to talk about things that I've since um, managed to, uh, uh, to confirm. One of the things is that uh, death certificates are being changed to indicate deaths from COVID-19. And there's a lot of... Um, uh, evidence for that, documentary evidence. And then um, this is when we started to get the, uh, the backlash in America and the uh, crowd come, came out and demanded that the Mich Michigan governor reopen the economy. And um, then there was this COVID-19 coronavirus mutation threatens the race to develop a vaccine. I mean, that's really important, important stuff uh, because we keep on talking, hearing just about every week that the vaccine is on the way. So we get co contradictory information uh, from the mass media. 
And then uh, there's this uh, uh, German build newspaper accuses Beijing of exporting the coronavirus and the China's outraged after largest German newspaper accuses Beijing of exporting the coronavirus pandemic and demands 149 billion euros in damages. And then this, this uh, strange uh, thing, I think this sort of marked the, uh, the turning around of some people um, in, their, in, in their approach to all of this. Um, and that was uh, a hot mic moment where uh, a White House, White House journalist said, well, we've all been vaccinated already. And uh, I do have to wonder when I look at the pictures of um, of the press conferences in New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern and uh, her representatives, they're all standing next to each other. Um, they're not wearing masks. There's, there's no social distancing. This is the very time when we're under um, level four lockdown. What sort of a message was that? Um, giving to the to the um, the New Zealand public when they were demanding that everyone keep uh, social distancing they couldn't even go for a, a solitary walk on the beach uh, and yet uh, we see these people are not wearing masks and they're not keeping any sort of social distancing and I have no idea whether the journalists at the uh, conference were either uh, and then by the 28th of April, the uh, four weeks of level four lockdown was over and coronavirus. So we're moving to level three. Uh, what does that mean for you? And of course, now we're looking at um, um, moving to level two. But of course, what level two means uh, is, a, is a moving feast. Uh, I think that the government just makes up its mind on the day. And then uh, this was uh, from Hal Turner. Uh, he's talking, talking about Anthony Fauci. You're fired. Clean out your desk and get on. Get out. So, uh, so that's April. Okay. So I've just got a few slides left over. These are from uh, from May. Um, so there's this uh, the other day from a Swedish expert who says that New Zealand faces years of quarantine and in fact this is going to be going on uh, in all countries for quite some time uh, and New Zealand or any other country is not uh, exempt. It's a bit of reality. And then uh, this is uh, yeah, uh, China asked the World Health Organization to delay pandemic announcement and to deny um, human to, human transmission. That's from German intelligence. And I've just shown uh, with this uh, timeline that that was so. But German intelligence has revealed that Chinese President Xi Jinping asked the World Health Organization director uh, Dr. Tedros, he's not Dr. Tedros, he's just Tedros, to cover up the severity of the coronavirus pandemic in January, according to Der Spiegel. During a, uh, a January 21 conversation one week after the WHO assured the world there was no clear evidence of human-to-human -human transmission, uh, she report, reportedly asked Tedros not to reveal that the uh, virus was in fact transmissible between humans and to delay clear, declaring that the coronavirus had become a pandemic uh, despite the virus qualifying as one by the WHO's own former guidelines. And uh, of course, uh, it's crystal clear uh, that that was in fact the case. We don't really need Spiegel to say it, but I'm glad they are. Ah. And then um, Wuhan 
lab hack, there was a hack from the WHO, I think, and uh, numerous organizations. Anyway, the Wuhan lab hack reveals unreported cases of COVID-19 cases, and there's evidence that re records were deleted. So nearly three weeks ago, a cache of approximately 25,000 email addresses and records of organizations involved with COVID-19 were leaked, including the Wuhan Institute of Virology, uh, the WHO, the U US National Institute of Health, and the Gates Foundation. Uh, to th today, the Weekend Australian reports that a data set um, obtained from the WIV using the hacked credentials suggests that the cases in China have been underreported. Unfortunately, I can't get uh, direct access to that because the Australian is well and truly behind a, uh, a paywall, which I'm not going to pay to, to, uh, to breach. Um, and then this is really current news. Uh, COVID-19 coronavirus, the cabinet meets today to decide if New Zealand is ready for an alert level two. And if they decide that we're ready for an alert level two, no doubt they will rewrite the rules uh, for, uh, from what they, you know, the original uh, announcement. And then how can I not mention it? Uh, just everything that has been coming out from anyone who has any sort of alternative uh, point of view um, that opposes the World Health Organization um, is being um, censored by uh, social media. And that, of course, includes uh, this uh, really good um, thing from uh, uh, Judy Mikovits or Mikovits, who has uh, shown that there's a ticking time bomb uh, in the form of retroviruses that have been spread to uh, people via both uh, contaminated blood and through uh, vaccinations, mostly because they cultured the viruses uh, in... Um, in mouse tissue, and of course that has transferred over to to humans. And she is maintaining that that is what's going to kill us, and not COVID nineteen. So I think she's got pretty good credentials, whether she's right or not. Of course, uh, we won't really know um, for some time. So uh, yeah, so that's that. <laughs>